Hello, welcome back to irishracing.com and our full day one preview of the Cheltenham Festival. The talking is done. I think we are now here finally. Uh, but we're going to round up our uh, experts' top selections for day one. We're going to be here throughout the week as well. And as ever, this content is sponsored by Bet365. So be sure to check out their odds and their offers ahead of each race. We're going to kick off with the Supreme, of course. And joining me as ever, we have Ed Quigley and Emma Nagel. So we've got a bit of an Irish versus English uh, angle here. It's going to be interesting. But I know, Ed, I don't think you're going to be too biased for the British trained horses. I think you're going to be looking at the Irish just as much as Emma is. Yeah, absolutely. No room for sentiment in business. That is uh, what they say, isn't it, Joan? As you said, the talking's all done, so let's talk some more. Absolutely. It's, it's the Chapter Festival. Why not? But uh, look, the big thing, very quickly... Rain, rain, and more rain at Cheltenham. Uh, it was another four millimetres overnight. Uh, obviously, we're speaking on Monday here. Turned the ground officially soft on the old course. Uh, strong winds today, but with a prospect of uh, another band of rain, some more showers moving through Monday evening into Tuesday. So, best case scenario, you're seeing soft ground. If you want to, uh, quote, a spring ground horse, look elsewhere. I really think this will be a, a proper war of attrition on the opening day. And that's it for you as well, Emma. I mean, obviously, we've had your tips as well in the last couple of weeks. But how do things change now, given the conditions? Yeah, I think in the Supreme in particular, like I was kind of looking at Marie National thinking, you know, he's going to get his ground here. He'd probably come on for his last one where he didn't particularly love the heavy ground. But, you know, now we're maybe looking at Basile Vega and thinking he loved this kind of later on in the week, the likes of Jerry Clome. A lot of the Irish horses will be suited by the heavy ground. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going, to, it's going to have a massive impact. The Slayer's Hurdle, Tiupu will, will absolutely love that kind of ground. So, yeah, there's a lot of horses now that you'd be kind of looking at maybe a bit more favourably than you would have if it was kind of real spring ground, as Ed was saying. Yeah. All right, well, let's kick things off, as you say, with the Supreme then. And Emma, I'll start with you as well. I mean, so, again, how are things changing up? Maybe just go into a little bit more depth as to, yeah, how you see this race shaping up, given the conditions. Yeah, I mean, looking at it now... I'm still kind of not 100% certain on the winner in my own head, to be honest. Um, I was kind of toying with Marie National last week. Um, if, if it is going to be as heavy as Ed was saying, I, I couldn't have him, to be honest. He's not really, I know he won on heavy ground last time out, but, you know, it was kind of despite of the ground rather than because of it. And he'd be facing better horses here. We saw um, Irish Point, who he beat that day, come out yesterday, but, you know, he wasn't massively impressive, you know, you um and so for see the vega you'd have to say would be the one that would suit it like if you remember the bumper last year on the wednesday it was absolute an absolute bog and he he loved the mud so you know i think if if it does end up getting getting soft soft to heavy he'll probably be the one i'll back um i still give high definition a bit of a chance he's about 14 to 1. they're pretty sweet in him and joseph's and um, like if he can jump at all he'd have to be bang there like we saw the class he had on the flat so yeah at the moment i'm probably I said I wasn't going to back him because he was a bit sharp. I probably would for Seal Vega, just give him the ground and maybe a small bit each way on high definition as well. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, touching on uh, Joseph O'Brien, Emma, you were at the yard the other day as well for the stable tour. So again, just maybe for me personally, when I would go and help Ed with these stable tours as well, it kind of gives me more of a little bit of bias towards that trainer. Is it the same for you yeah. as well, speaking to Joseph? Yeah, it, it probably did now, to be fair. Um, I found myself, I probably hopped between every single horse in the stairs hurdle and I find myself a bit of a home by the Lee fan now at the moment. <laughs> um, and high definition, you know, they're they're pretty sweet in him and a few in the handicaps as well. You kind of just look at them a bit more closely, I suppose, when you kind of, when you saw them in person or you heard Joseph speaking about them. So yeah, it's probably giving me a bit of a bias, sorry. <laughs> and for you, Ed, as well, just take us through your thoughts at the moment. Yeah, incredibly wide open. Personally, I couldn't go anywhere near Fasal Vega. Uh, essentially, you're asking me to back a horse who was pulled up last time out um, at 9-4 to four to win a, a Grade 1 at the Cheltenham Festival. Um, I think he's very slightly on the drift now at 5-2. to two. The, the strength of the money in the, in the markets on the Monday seems to be coming for Ilete Tom, who's now uh, who's now tightened up uh, into 9-2, to two, uh, was a point or, or bigger only 24 hours or so ago. And I think people are looking back at that Fasal Vega run last time out and Look, you can make excuses for Fasal Vega all you like. The one thing that wasn't in question is the manner in which Ilete Tom blew the field away there. And I think a lot of people see Ilete Tom as the kind of each way shot to nothing in the opener. So, look, I think it's uh, incredibly wide open. I said this could be a bit of a boil over. You can make a case for so many of them. Um, mm. As Emma says, like high definition on peak uh, flat form um, gives about nine stone to this lot. So it's a, it's a, it's a funny old race. Um, small each way play. 
Obviously, uh, I like Diverge from uh, the anti-post angles we've done on this show. Uh, but I thought Chasing Fire for the home team. Uh, it could be a Shades of Thomas Derby part two here, of course, who chased home classical dream in the Supreme four years ago. Horses unbeaten, quickened up really nicely to win it Sandown last time out. If you look at his pedigree, he's a Maxios. Um, it was a mud-loving French flat sire. So I'm not too concerned uh, by underfoot conditions with that horse for all that it is an unknown. But I said he's done nothing wrong. His form in itself isn't anything spectacular, but I think it could be this type of race or that type of race this year where you can tie your head in knots a little bit with who's beaten who and who's done what. And it's mm. perhaps a little bit more about a horse at a price with potential. So a uh, small each way play in the opener, uh, chasing fire, cost £170,000 after dotting up in a point. He's remained unbeaten so far. Aiden Coleman rides. Uh, he's my each way play, 20 to 1 to land Supreme. Yeah, so you've got a nice uh, British angle there for us, Ed. But let's move on to the Arkle. And I don't think you're going to be going for the British strain there. Uh, John Bon here. Well, what do you make of it? Uh, very, very trappy, to be honest with you. I'm going to see if Emma's got a more convincing um, argument into it. I mean, the one thing I would say is I was not expecting nine runners. Uh, and I think a fair play to a lot of connections. I've thought, look, really, there's so many horses in here. Oh, aren't they? They're 66, 100 to one pokes. But they thought, look, the prize money's down to sixth. Let's roll the dice. Let's have a go. You never know. A uh, bit of carnage on soft ground and we could run into some, some healthy prize money. I, I genuinely don't have a strong view on this. If, if you really forced me, I would go with Al Fabiolo. But um, I think this is too tricky to call. Al Fabiolo and John Bond split by shortest of margins uh, when they met once over hurdles. Al Fabiolo's produced a much better chase form so far. As Nicky Henderson says, John Bond's being peaked for one day. So it's uh, how much more improvement there is is there with John Bond over fences to go up and match the Al Fabiolo run from the Dublin Racing Festival, which was was standout form, it has to be said. So uh, really tricky to call, and I'm, I'm going to gloriously fence it with this one. <laughs> right, speaking of a bit of carnage with Dice Art Dynamo potentially leading off, I mean, Emma, how big a factor do you think that will be in this one? And um, well, it's going to suit El Fabiolo, I think, like we saw that in Leopardstown, that kind of style of running will suit him, and Dice Art Dynamo will go off at his own pace. He'll go pretty hard. Um, now, if it is going to be as soft as we're saying, maybe Danny might take it a bit easier on him, but it's going to suit El Fabiolo either way. Um, look, John Mon has a bit to prove, as Ed was saying, kind of at this level. He hasn't kind of competed in this kind of grade over fences yet, whereas El Fabiolo has that experience coming into the race, which is what puts him ahead for me. Um, look, John Mon was very good, very good horse over hurdles. Obviously, beaten a long way in this last year, but you know, I think when they met last year, um, last year at Aintree, you know, El Fabiolo was very, very inexperienced then, and I think he has just come on so much since. And it's kind of hard to judge whether John Mon has progressed as as much as well, just given the fact you know the quality of horses he's been running against hasn't been as high. So I think El Fabiolo for me, like it's kind of hard to see. I think El Fabiolo is a bit of a superstar, and you know, having two kind of superstars in the same generation is kind of hard to. Hard to see happening, so I think I think he probably just has the engine to to take John Mon out of this. Um, his jumping is probably a slight worry. You know, they're going to be going so fast in the air. You know, if he makes an error, will he be able to recover? But I don't think his jumping is really that bad. You know, I don't think he's gonna. He's I, I, he's not really a horse that ever looks like he's gonna fall really, and he's brave. You know, he comes back from his mistakes. So, yeah, it's El Fabiolo for me. I wouldn't be dismissing John Mon at all, but um, I just think El Fabiolo has just a massive engine and. It'll, it'll pay to your strengths in the soft ground as well, I think. All right, I think that sets it up nicely uh, in the arc. Well, let's move on to the Ultima, third race on the card. So, Ed, just take us through your thoughts here. Uh, yeah, 23 to go to post. Uh, yeah, plenty to pick from. Oh, straightforward, Joe. Absolutely straightforward. <laughs> yeah, uh, one of my favourite uh, races of the, the year. I love this race. Uh, it really is. It, it's great. All sorts of different plots and angles. You've got horses who are once pretty good, who have dropped down the weights of stone or so. Horses are on the, the upward curve and has the handicapper got to them. Uh, the, I suppose the the, very, the first place to start is with Corrick Rambler, uh, of course, who um, did us all a good favour on this show a year ago. Um, six pound higher than when winning it 12 months ago. And um, there's, there's no kind of juicy odds around this time round. Uh, it's around seven to one favourite now. Mm. Um, you know, claims are there to be advertised. The difference with Corrick Rambler's prep, in my view, this time round is this is very much his run before the Grand National. Whereas last year he was kind of a bit more peaking towards this, if you see what I'm saying, without any illustrious plans in the diary afterwards. So 
And that's just something to bear in mind. It's short enough for me at the prices. Look, uh, from the ads post angles on this show, I've put up three under through five. I thought he looked a classic non-stayer in the classic chase at Warwick. That was three five in heavy. If you stop the race uh, at the three mile marker, he looks like playing a real part of things, but he just kind of faded uh, on deep ground in the closing stages. Back half a mile in trip here. I think that'll suit him. He's got winning form on the old course at Cheltenham. Um, I, I think he's a bit of a player, uh, but with the way conditions have gone, I'm going to V the field. Um, an absolute rogue in here. I'm tipping horse number four, the big breakaway. Uh, this is this is a race as well that the Irish do absolutely no good in. Um, Tony Martin's horse in 2006, I think, was the uh, the only time they've managed to land this. But so this could be one for the home team. Um, the big breakaway. Uh, the more the rain, the merrier for this horse. He is gloriously slow. He's only actually got one win over fences. And funny enough, that came on deep ground at Cheltenham when he romped home by 10 lengths. His Cheltenham form overall is pretty good. Uh, he was fourth to Envoy Allen in the Ballymore once upon a time. He won uh, on his only start, uh, his first start over fences at Cheltenham. And then his only ever start over fences, he finished third to Monkfish. So f Cheltenham, soft ground, brings out the best of him. He's a, he's a, old-fashioned Dower Stayer. He was last seen finishing runner-up in the Welsh Grand National. 3-5 in heavy ground. That pretty much tells you all you need to know about the big breakaway. I uh, say he's going to go and win it. Uh, might be a little bit of um, a little bit far-fetched given there's probably something in here a bit better treated. But as my, my mantra for the, the day, Joe, would be I think you can get a little bit caught up in weights and measures and mm. it's just going to come down to who will handle conditions and who goes in them. Uh, something £10 well in but hates the ground, forget it. Uh, he's a bit more exposed to big breakaway, but he's a thorough stayer, loves Cheltenham and loves soft ground. And if he ran into a place at 16 to 1 or there or thereabouts, I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, I think as you can see here on site, I'm just filtering out basically all of the Cheltenham runs. So Emma, for you, I mean, how much, how important would it be the Cheltenham form looking at this kind of race? Yeah, I mean, course forms are always massive for Cheltenham. You know, it's not, um, it's not kind of, it's, it's a course that horses kind of, really love or they don't a lot of them won't actually take this but unlike it i'm not a big fan of this race don't think, i don't think i've ever backed the winner of it um <laughs> it's kind of a guessing game for me to be honest like i think a car like rambler has to be respected definitely he hasn't ran a whole lot since he won this last year he's only gone up six pounds as well but as well i would be wary that it is kind of he's prepped for the grand national rather than maybe being his target but you know i think he's probably treated well enough that he could probably win this if if he got things right on the day um one kind of at a bigger price. Oh, I think he's just a horse that I really like. He always runs his race. Uh, Top Phil Ben. You know, he, I thought he ran brilliant at the Dublin mm. Racing Festival last time. He was third. He's dropping away down the weights, and you know, he's just always he, he's always up there. So I think he'll probably give you a good run for your money at thirty trees. He could run into a place, but outside of that, no, I, I don't, I'm, I'm only guessing really. So I think Carrick Rambler probably has a lot of respect to maybe Top Phil Ben each way. Okay, I think that sums up nicely. But moving on to a race where maybe there's not so much guesswork involved on who's going to win. I think we can probably all agree it is going to be Constitution Hill's race to win here, the champion hurdle. But Ed, any other interesting angles you can kind of talk about here? Or is it just, yeah, let's wait and see one of the greatest of all time, potentially. Yeah, Constitution Hill beats State Man with Oban in third. There we go. I think that's pretty much it. I don't see any, any um, jokers in the pack. Obviously, being a... Uh, a state man fan uh, from last April. Um, he's going to be he's going to be a great value loser for viewers. Uh, state man, I think we're on the double figures, aren't we? But uh, I actually think state man will at least get Constitution Hill, not even off the bridle, but he will ask him for uh, something. He's got to pose him some question. I mean, this horse is uh, one of his last four Grade Ones in pretty good style. He's rapidly improving. The slickness of state man's jumping. It's getting better and better. Even in the county hurdle, he's a bit sticky at a couple of hurdles. Um, on his, first, his reappearance, I think it was in the Morgiana, wasn't it? He was a little bit sticky, but he was very slick on his last two occasions. Uh, tactically, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, he was ridden very cold in the county, picked rivals off in a huge field. More recently, he's gone to like the kind of front-running tactics. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do here. Either way, I like to think at least State Man will ask a question to Constitution Hill, but I expect Constitution Hill uh, to go through the gears. I don't. Right, this is this is the the interesting one. I mean, nothing has got within twelve lengths of Constitution Hill um, since he's gone over obstacles, Nicky Henderson. So it, it's the distances is is the interesting one. I, I think it might be a little bit tougher than. The margin suggests. I'm not. I'm not convinced we're going to see Constitution Hill 
18 lengths clear with Nico watching himself on the screen and patting the horse down the neck. Like if we are, we're looking at the new Easter Brack or beyond potentially. But uh, yep, uh, I think Constitution Hill convincingly beats State Man and uh, we move on and crown a champion. Yeah, Emma, for you, any uh, final thoughts on the champion hurdle? Yeah, look, Constitution Hill wins, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a write-up. I think State Man's a brilliant horse. I have a lot of respect for him. And, you know, Willie Mullins thinks he's a champion hurdler as well, and he's trained enough of them to know what a champion hurdler is. Obviously, Constitution Hill looks like a bit of a machine, so I don't see him beating him. But I think it'll be a, a race, an interesting race. I know that there isn't too many runners, but um, it'll be interesting to see kind of him prove himself, I suppose, because he still probably has, he ha obviously has that to prove still. He for his first champion hurdle, so... It'll be a good race, not a, not a, not a betting affair, though. Fair enough. Let's move on then to a race that probably is more of a betting affair. So let's move on to the Mayor's Hurdle. Of course, Chuck, last year's Champion Hurdle winner. Honeysuckle goes here instead of taking on Constitution Hill. Uh, Ed, any final thoughts on this race? Well, I mean, the um, the yo-yoing of Marie's Rock, isn't it? This is the big talking point. Um, was pretty much looked, uh, according to all reports in the markets, that Marie's Rock, who is the defending champion of this, was heading to the Stayers. Uh, of course, all this recent rainfall has um, meant connections have uh, thrashed out a bit of a, a heated argument. It, it, it kind of sounds, if you believe the, the Twitter rumours, and in the end, uh, they've gone to stick with this race and, and try and defend a crown. Um, look, this is a really, really tough race. This is one of the races of the week. Uh, look, you can crab. A lot of people think this race shouldn't be at the festival because uh, it's obviously diluting from other races like the Stairs Hurdle. And the champion hurdle and the fact that Honeysuckle and Epitone are two previous champions of the champion hurdle and they're meeting here, etc, etc. But look, all that aside, this is a brilliant race in itself. By and large, uh, Joe, I think that Marie's Rock is short enough because I think she's in a deeper race than she was 12 months ago. Uh, as much as I love Honeysuckle uh, and to an extent Epitone, uh, look, time waits for no horse. And I just wonder whether two and a half miles in a bog is what either of those horses are going to want at this stage of their career. So I'm looking beyond those at the top of the market. Um, obviously, Brandy Love has been one of my strongest fancies for the festival for some time. Just a little bit uh, tempered by the recent rain. She has won on softer heavy, but that was at a very low level. Uh, her performance at Fairy House last year was absolute push button acceleration stuff when she quickened up by nine lengths to beat Love Envoy at Fairy House. That was on yielding ground. A lot of the jockeys saying, you know, it was it was good to soft in English terms. You see what I'm saying? So I'm a little got a little bit more lukewarm on her than I have been. So she's already in the book, and I've had to come in on the day and save on Love Envoy, who may have a little bit to find with the peak form of those star mares in here. Mm. But look, she got the job done at Charter Festival last year. And she will absolutely love every drop of rain that is falling. Uh, will love Envoy. She will power through the mud. So I'm going kind of 2v the field. I'm essentially laying the top three, for want of a better phrase. I'm, I'm love Envoy, Brandy Love. Um, look, Honeysuckle hits the front. The proverbial roof is going to come off the stand. But I just wonder whether it, it might be a little bit of a bridge too far, especially over two and a half on this ground. So uh, Brandy Love, Len, Love Envoy, my 2v the field in what is a, an epic renewal of the Mayor's Hurdle. Absolutely. And for you, Emma, as well? Yeah, it, it is an epic renewal in fairness. Like this, it has its, it has its quivers, but you know, you think of the likes of like Honeysuckle, Epiton, maybe Echoes and Rain would be in the champion hurdle if this race wasn't here with no hope. So they're here now making kind of a great race of this and kind of, it's, it's a great betting affair as well because you could give a chance to so many of them. Um, look, I'd love to see Honeysuckle win. That would be my kind of moment to the Cheltenham Festival if it did happen, but the rain isn't helping her at all. I don't think, you know, two mile four on heavy ground won't be her ideal. Um, I think she's like I don't think she's regressing as much as people are maybe saying she is, but at the same time, like she has a lot on her plate here. There's some very good mares in this race. Um obviously Marie's Rock have a lot of respect from her for her um decide to go here probably the easier option but not by a whole point i'd have to say um the one who kind of was standing out to me was echoes and rain I, I she's just a mare that i really really like um she was very good on the flat all summer she won the big qr race in galway and she was second in the cesaro is just behind waterville as well um i think she's a mare who's just maturing you know she used to be very keen always pulling kind of taking herself out of the races just by by pulling too hard but she seems to be settling a bit more now patrick's up on her he knows her very very well um i just think she has a massive chance of 10 to 1 she probably looks a bit overpriced for me she's ground versatile as well she's won on heavy ground before so yeah i think i think i'm probably gonna back echoes and rain but i'll probably be shouting for honeysuckle <laughs> <laughs> 
No, nice uh, each way fancy there. All right, let's move on then to the next race on the card. So the Boodles, Juvenile Handicap Hurdle, of course. Uh, I actually backed the winner of this at 33 to 1 a few years ago. So it's one I have a <laughs> bit of a soft spot for, but... Um, one I'm actually looking at myself is one that's been steamed in. I know, Ed, you've also been kind of keen on this one, but bad for the Ben Pauling team. Just tell us about him. Yeah, indeed. The French recruit, bad. Uh, he's, he's become the, the kind of preview night horse, hasn't he? Uh, obviously, Rachel Blackmore being booked for the Ben Pauling team for the first time, I believe. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, someone could correct me on that. But yeah, it's all dotted up in France. Uh, essentially, what's happened here is um, bad was uh, went to the Ben Pauling team at the back end of last year. Uh, they picked him up. Now, he was entered on trials day at the Triumph Hur in the Triumph Hurdle trial. Um, they did that essentially to see what rating he would get. Well, he's been given a BHA rating of 126, which is a huge discrepancy uh, compared to his French mark, which is officially 138. Well, we've seen some kind of similar uh, things like this in the past, haven't we? With Opeti Soi winning, uh, winning a race for, for Paul Nichols, who was, you know, inverted commas, a stonewell in on his French form, etc., etc. And bad kind of fits that mould. So naturally, when Ben Pauling heard that news, I think he kind of spat his morning oats out, couldn't believe it. And they've, they've wrapped him in cotton wool and kept him for this on the assumption they think he's basically about stonewell in on his, his French form. Rachel Blackmore, uh, the booking only in, uh, enhances the confidence. But look, mm. the price has kind of gone down. This is a race of absolute carnage, isn't there? Huge field, tight enough track. There's going to be a, a, you know, a, a shopping list of hard luck stories in the aftermath of this. So, yeah, I expect Ben's other runner in here as well, Samuel Spade, who's done very little wrong this season with Handle Ground. Uh, but um, my anti-post uh, shout on here, going back a couple of months ago, I'm sticking with because the ground has actually come in his favour, and that is Metamorphous uh, for the um, Paul Nolan team. Um, recently picked up in, in a private sale for new, new syndicate, new connections. Uh, this also is penultimate start in a minor event at Punchestown. Uh, quickened up nicely, looked pretty smart on soft ground. Uh, left Timothy Doyle's, gone to Paul Nolan, uh, and then, uh, how shall I say, I think he was ridden sympathetically uh, with other days in mind on much quicker ground at Nace last time out. It's the Nace race, which has a good record of producing winners in this. I think, you know, Aramax and a couple of others um, in, in recent years have come from that race uh, to win this. He was fifth behind Sir Allen, not beaten all that far on much quicker ground than ideal. As I said, I think he was ridden with other targets possibly in mind. So uh, the, all the rain that's arriving would not be a problem for him. And he's off one two five here. Sean Flanagan takes the ride. I think we're twenty to one each way. Bet three six five. Uh, he is my each way play in. Uh, look, it's, it's a bit of equine roulette this race, isn't it? As we was, we we saw on, on many of occasion over the years. But he's my each way selection. And Emma, for you, uh, any outside fancies? Just want to get your take actually on that Rachel Blackmore booking on bad. I mean, do you, is that something you'd look for as well in these kind of harder to pick races? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely eye-catching. It kind of kind of reminds you of Gaelic Warrior last year, really, doesn't it? Kind of thrown mm. into this off, off a low mark. Um, Rachel being booked, definitely. Like, I'm not sure who, who normally writes for Ben, but, you know, Rachel is obviously going to be a massive plus for, for anyone to be booking, kind of, especially when it's not when it's not kind of a normal um, trainer combination. So, yeah, it's it'll be interesting. I, I, I find it hard to back myself just because, you know, the price has probably gotten him now um, and, you know, don't know anything about him, but mm -hmm. it would be definitely interesting watching him throughout the race. All right. Um, I think to cow for Willie Mullins has to have an awful lot of respect in this as well. Um, you know, you'd have to think maybe if uh, he didn't have, you know, the blood destiny in the last team, who kind of looked like two star juveniles, this lad could probably be a triumph for us. You know, we saw him behind last team out last time at Leperstown. I thought he was very, very eye catching. Um, McToig is kept in the race to keep the weights up. I think, you know, he could take a fair bit of beating. Um, he's obviously short enough in the bidding for a big handicap like this and probably hard to back him at that price. But I think another one, Sarah Allen, has got a massive chance for the Slatteries. Um, Danny Mullins is booked. He was second behind Blood Destiny first time out of Cork, which wasn't a bad one in hindsight. And he's beaten a few of these then since. I think he beat Biker last time. Um, so around 11 to 1, I'd give him a bit of a chance. Just jockey booking again is eye-catching. Um, 
you know, is somebody who could start naming more and more than Biker, obviously, for Charles Burns and have a bit of a squeak as well. Cheek pieces on for the first time. That'll probably wake him up a bit. He was behind Sir Allen last time, but maybe a bit like Metamorphous. Maybe he was being ridden with other things in mind. So, yeah, I might, I'll probably have a bit each way on Sir Allen, um, but I'd have an awful lot of respect for Takao. Uh, I think he he could be, he could be kind of thrown in here. Um, could be probably a graded horse is what Patrick Mullins was calling him. So it could be hard to beat. Yeah, great stuff. Again, some uh, potential each way value there. And let's move on now to the final race on day one. Ed, take us through your thinking here. Only one winner for you, or do you think, uh, yeah, anything else can kind of take your fancy? Well, all year I've said there's only one winner in this, and that's Chemical Energy. I've been absolutely pumped up for this horse to win by half a track. A 61-length winner, Chatham's October meeting. Um, ran below par on soft ground last time out, but I think that's the key here. Soft ground could have totally undone my chances. Uh, Jamie Codd on the preview night the other night, kind of tuggy cheek, basically saying the horse has got absolutely zero chance of winning uh, with the way that the ground's gone. Um, look, I, I, th I just think it's, it's a case of those. Galliard de Manil, this looks a golden opportunity. Look, he's not the most reliable of horses. You know, look at facts. He, Galliard de Manil is one from eight over fences, albeit in pretty lofty company compared to this. But it could just be a case of, he could plod himself around. He's the better plodder out of the lot of them, to be honest with you. And I don't think the ground inconvenience him. He's got eight pounds in hand on official figures. I suppose it's a debate for a rainy day and maybe for Emma and Johnny Vincent to get stuck into as to whether a, a grey one winner should be running in an amateur race at the festival. Uh, or at least should there be some stipulation to by which they, they carry a penalty or something. Because it seems to almost be self-defeating what the race was created for. But as I said, I suppose that's a, a, a debate for another day. But Galliard de Manil. Um, should take all the beating. I've got my blinkers on. I've got my chemical energy blinkers on. Having, uh, I didn't get, I didn't get on it sixty six to one that the uh, the Gordon Elliott team are on at, but I've got on it juicy odds. But uh, I just fear the ground may have totally done him. But look, it's not a deep race. I don't think he's in the in the contest. You never know. Galliard de Manil spits the dummy out for whatever reason. We might have half a squeak. So um, yeah, one of those now that I'm. Uh, it's a no bet race on the day for me. I'm just going to sit and uh, watch with bated breath to see how chemical energy gets on. And how about for you, Emma? Yeah, and, and no bet for me. Either. I think Gadda Dominion wins, but he's he'd be too short for me to be backing him, to be honest. Um, not a race that I particularly like. Uh, you know, it's probably something you'd be happy enough seeing any weekend. And that doesn't really need to be in the Cheltenham Festival. Um, chemical energy is interesting. You know, when he won at Cheltenham that time, they said they were going to put him away for this race, but they actually ended up running him in, be in between at Nace. Not sure why, maybe they just thought he might have needed the run, but you know, if he can bounce back from that, he might have... sorry. Yeah. Well, sorry, sorry was that it? Was that it? Qualified. Yeah, I think it okay, was. Okay, yeah. because I, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I remember, yeah, because I remember when he won at Cheltenham, Gordon said he'd put him away for this, but yeah. Hmm. But yeah, like, on, on that form, he'd he'd have a chance, but I think that I'd do my knee, like, I know, as you were saying, he has. He hasn't won too often over fences, but when you look at the horses who beat him, you know, you can't, uh, I don't think you can take too much away from him for that either. So, you know, he is. I don't think he's a real grade one horse, but he's not too far off it. And I don't think there's anything else of that quality in the field. So I, yeah, I, I can't see him being beat, to be honest. Okay. Uh, yeah. So no bet in the last, but yeah, should keep an eye on it anyway. Uh, but Emma, let's just round up today's show with uh, your best bet of the day, please. My best bet of the day, I think um, Echoes and Rain and the Mayors. I think she has a real chance and I think mm -hmm. 10 to 1 is, is a good price for her. And for you, Ed? Uh, I'm going to go the big breakaway each way in the Ultima. Come on the rain. <laughs> well, yeah, plenty of rain expected, at least today and tomorrow, perhaps. Um, but yeah, that wraps it up for today's show. So thanks a lot to Ed and Emma for your advice and uh, insight. We'll be back again to, uh, tomorrow for our day two preview as well. Plenty of action coming your way here on irishracing.com. Plenty of videos as well. So subscribe to the channel for more. And as always, please do gamble safely.